Chapter 505, A Grave Loss. Fujin continued analyzing. Compared to that, the Chidori is a bit easier. While my Chidori isn't as good as Kakashi's Chidori, it's only a matter of time before it becomes as good as his. Actually, even without it, my current level with Chidori is sufficient to poke holes or overwhelm the usual defenses. The only time I'd struggle would be if I try going head-on against another Chidori or a Rasengan, or go up against a defense at the level of Gara. In addition, I also managed to create a one-finger lightning jab by taking inspiration from the third Raikage's attack. Though it is nowhere near his level, it'll continue improving. My initial plan with the lightning release was to have a combat system like this. I did create some more jutsus to help out with defenses and for some other uses. What I didn't expect was that I would get the Blade of the Thunder Spirit. It allows me to fight comfortably from a range as well. It was indeed a very helpful gift, as it directly resolved the issue of me not having good mid- and long-range jutsus. I was overly dependent on the Lightning Beam and the False Darkness jutsus, and neither was strong enough to threaten an elite Junin. Now, it is a completely different story with the amplification the sword provides me. Looks like my lightning combat system is almost complete. A smile formed on Fujin's face. Unlike with wind, he had received very little help to improve his lightning jutsus. Reaching such a level with just himself was a great accomplishment. Fujin let out a yawn and muttered to himself, It's late at night. I need to sleep. There is still some exhaustion from the soldier pill. Tomorrow, I need to see what happens after Danzo finds the dead bodies. If nothing serious happens, I need to start working on creating the 8 Trigrams Divination Seal. I'll have my clones work on it while I train Flying Thunder God and the 8 Inner Gates. Fujin went to sleep. The night was very peaceful in Konoha. However, no one knew the storm that would soon hit the higher-ups in the village. The next day, a root ninja visited one of the four bases on a routine visit. When he entered it, his eyes widened as he saw two root ninjas lying dead. He immediately sent a clone to inform Donzo. Within a few minutes, Donzo and eight root ninjas arrived at the base. Root ninjas dying inside Konoha was a huge matter. Donzo bent down and began observing the two dead bodies. So did a couple of other root ninjas, one of whom was a medical ninja. The medical ninja said, they died without any struggle. There is only one small injury on their foreheads, which looks to be made by a Senbon piercing through their head. Their opponent should have been much stronger than them. Another added, There is no Senbon inside this room. Donzo's eyes landed on the two small holes in the walls. He walked towards them. Immediately, everyone else noticed them as well. Donzo said, The Senbon were thrown with a lot of power. Not only did they pierce through their heads, they also pierced through the wall. Follow this hole to see where the Senbons are. A couple of root ninjas immediately disappeared. A frown appeared on Donzo's face as he analyzed. One of these two is at the Junin level, yet he died in the same manner as the other. Who attacked them? Donzo fell into deep thought. He had a bad feeling. He wondered, did an enemy village send a spy? But who'd send such a strong spy into Konoha? And, how did they find the location of this hidden base and manage to enter without triggering any alarms? Something doesn't add up. The root ninjas returned and reported, Lord Danzo, the trail ends on the other side of the base. There are two deep holes, but there is no Senbon in either of the holes. However, the holes aren't damaged. I don't understand how anyone would retrieve them. Danzo's frown deepened. He immediately followed them. It was as they said. There were two tiny holes that were about three meters deep. However, there was no Senbon inside them, and there was no sign of any external damage to the hole for anyone to remove the Senbon. Donzo immediately began analyzing, did the attacker retrieve the weapon as it would leave clues? However, removing a weapon from here isn't easy unless the attacker is a puppet master. Another possibility is that it wasn't a Senbon, and instead was a chakra-based attack that is similar to a Senbon, perhaps made of wind or ice. As Fujin had guessed, it wouldn't take long for Danzo to figure out what had happened. After all, in terms of experience, Danzo was leagues ahead of Fujin, even more so when it came to acting in the dark. One root ninja suddenly appeared behind Danzo and reported, Lord Danzo, I inspected the injury. The insides of their head are hit by lightning. 
I suspect that their memories can no longer be read. I inspected the holes in the wall as well. They also show signs of lightning damage as well. I suspect that they were attacked with a lightning-enhanced Senbon. Danzo said, I see. Call Yamanaka Fu here and have him inspect their memories to see if their memories can still be read. Danzo secretly deactivated the seal on their brains that was responsible for attacking anyone who tried to read their memories. He continued analyzing. An elite Junin or a rank S who can use lightning-enhanced Senbon assisted by someone skilled in controlling puppets or someone using shadow clones to achieve the same effect. Is it an external scheme? Or is it someone from within the village? An image of a certain silver-haired ninja appeared in Danzo's mind. However, Danzo couldn't see any reason why he would do something like this. More importantly, the bad feeling he was getting had only gotten worse, but he didn't understand where it was coming from. He asked the ninja who informed him about the dead bodies, Did you visit the other three bases? The root ninja answered, No, Lord Danzo. This was the first base I visited. Danzo immediately instructed a couple of ninjas to collect any and all evidence there. The remaining ninjas followed him. To their shock, the next two bases were in a similar state. The situation in those two bases was nearly identical. After inspecting for some time and leaving behind more root ninjas to gather any evidence left behind, Danzo and three root ninjas headed towards the last base. As they did, even Donzo became a bit nervous. He thought, I haven't heard anything from the last base either. There were nine ninjas there, if they also met the same fate. Donzo didn't particularly care about the lives of his subordinates. During the Great Wars, many of them would die frequently while doing extremely high-risk missions behind enemy lines. However, that was a different era. Danzo had several hundred ninjas en route at that time. And... Donzo could freely recruit hundreds of talented kids and train them to replace the dead root ninjas. Unfortunately for him, it was no longer the case. Hiruzen had been hard on the root after the Uchiha massacre. He didn't have many subordinates. Losing 15 subordinates in one go would mean that he would lose more than a third of his manpower. In actuality, that was even worse than it sounded. Donzo thought, though I had 41 subordinates en route, many can't be deployed due to their duties. Losing 15 would mean that I would lose more than half the forces that I could deploy for missions. It will be a grave loss for Konoha if they are dead. Another aspect was that Donzo couldn't recruit any kids either. He had managed to get his hands on slightly more than 100 kids from the Land of Water, but they were still in training it would easily take half a decade for some of them to meet the minimum requirements of taking a root mission. The remaining kids could take an even longer time. In addition, Danzo couldn't kidnap any more kids from the Land of Water. Both the Mizukage faction and the Rebel faction had noticed the cases of children going missing and understood that someone was kidnapping young kids. Despite their conflict, both came to a tacit understanding and began taking action to prevent such ing, idents, making it extremely risky for Root to continue their operations. Donzo had long withdrawn his subordinates from the Land of Water, as he didn't want to lose the few capable Root ninjas he still had under his command. Donzo's group finally reached the last base. Every single person, including Donzo, was stunned by the sight. Power Stones, guys! Let's go back in the top 10. If you can, then please support me on Patreon. Link to patreon.com slash devilhex, no space. Alternatively, you can support me on UPI, Google Pay. Patil Sarvesh 8 can read up to 50 chapters ahead on Patreon. Thank you, Dmalf, Andreas, Khalif, and Memes Syndicate for supporting me on Patreon. Chapter 5 of 6, Reminding Donzo of His Situation. 500th Chapter. Kinda in disbelief that we have come so far, Thanks for all your support and love, guys. There is no way I could have written half a thousand chapters without your love and support. Let's hope we keep going strong further as well. As soon as they entered the base, they were greeted by the sight of one root ninja stuck underground with only his head stuck above the ground facing them. A finger-sized hole could be seen in his forehead. Some distance behind him were innumerable damaged explosive seals. On those seals lay two dead bodies, one of which was beheaded. Behind them was a burnt room. 
the smell of burnt flesh still lingered in the air. Donzo's expression became very grim. It was a great loss. In terms of percentage, this was the second worst loss that Root experienced. The worst was, of course, when Hiruzen disbanded the Root and inducted a large amount of Root ninjas into the Anbu. They quickly began inspecting the dead bodies. Donzo's expression became very serious when he noticed the hole in the chest of one of the dead bodies. He quickly thought of Kakashi. In the past, he had looked at the bodies of a few enemy ninjas who had fallen to Kakashi's Chidori. The injury was identical. Donzo's expression became ugly as he thought, Hatake Kakashi, this attack is undoubtedly his work. How can an enemy find all the hidden bases and pinpoint the four where ninjas were deployed? However, why would he suddenly do this? Donzo fell into deep thought. This time, none of the root ninjas dared to disturb him. This loss was too big for root. Donzo quickly concluded, Kakashi has no reason to do this. The only reason why he would do something like this is if he was ordered by Hiruzen. He cursed internally. Hiruzen, what scheme are you making this time? Still, to secretly kill Konoha's shinobi, this is so unlike Hiruzen. Did he discover something? Or is someone scheming in the shadows to make me go against Hiruzen? Donzo couldn't be sure. However, all clues pointed directly towards Hiruzen. He didn't see any way that enemy countries would be able to sneak inside Konoha, search the hidden root bases, and kill 15 root ninjas without drawing any suspicion at all. Even Akaje might not be able to pull that off. However, the Hiruzen he knew wouldn't have done such a sloppy job. Having worked with Hiruzen for so long, Danzo knew that if Hiruzen was the one behind this incident, then the evidence would have been such that Hiruzen would have been the last person Danzo suspects. One of the root ninjas asked, Lord Danzo, should we shut down the entrance of the village to prevent culprits from escaping? Danzo answered, No, if they wanted to escape, they would already have. How long has it been since their death? The medical ninja who was inspecting the bodies answered, All fifteen ninjas died roughly around twelve to fourteen hours ago. I'll need to perform an autopsy to be sure. Danzo ordered, All right, keep inspecting the bodies. He looked towards the other two subordinates and instructed, Inspect the entire base. See if you can find any clues. The fight here is much more intense than the rest. Hopefully, there might be some clues left behind. The root ninjas immediately got to work. While the root ninjas worked, Danzo began planning what action he could take. Despite his decades of experience, he didn't see an easy way out of that situation. It was bad, no matter what he assumed. If the current situation was created by enemy villages, then his Root faced an existential crisis as they seemed to want to take out Root before making any moves on Konoha. On the other hand, if it was Hiruzen, then Danzo was outmatched once again. While Danzo still had several trump cards and could make Hiruzen suffer as well, there was no doubt that Danzo would be the bigger loser. While Danzo planned his next move, the Root Ninjas completed their job. They approached Danzo and reported, Lord Danzo, there are no clues in this base either. It is just like the previous Thray, E-Bases. The medical ninja reported, Lord Danzo, the method of killing is more varied here. However, all the stab wounds are due to a lightning-enhanced object or jutsu. Though six bodies were burnt, I suspect they were hit after they had died. It was probably an attack from these two ninjas. Danzo nodded. He looked at one subordinate and ordered, Go to Hiruzen in person and ask him to come here. Tell him that I have called him and it is an emergency. Don't tell him the reason and observe his reaction carefully. Send shadow clones to call the remaining two elders here as well. The root ninja said, Yes, Lord Danzo. He quickly disappeared from the base. Danzo muttered to himself, Hiruzen, let me see what exactly you are up to. If you think I'll let you take the root away from my hands once again, then you are mistaken. The last time I couldn't do anything due to the situation. It won't be the same this time. After the Uchiha massacre, Danzo had no choice. If he had resisted, all Hiruzen had to do was tell the truth of the situation to the clan leaders. In an instant, everyone would be asking for Danzo's head. While that would have been impossible, the root would truly be stripped from Danzo. Unlike Hiruzen, they wouldn't have let him keep even a single root ninja. Hiruzen was talking with a few ninjas when the root ninja suddenly barged into his office. 
A frown appeared on Haruzan's face due to the root ninja entering without asking for his permission. At the same time, the four Ambu guards became alert as well. Without waiting, the root ninja directly said, It's an emergency. Lord Danzo has asked for your presence immediately. Haruzan wondered, Emergency? What happened? He looked at the ninjas in his office and said, You four leave, I'll call you again later. The four ninjas respectfully said farewell and left while wondering what the emergency was. Hiruzen followed the root ninja along with his Anbu guards. At the same time, Homura and Koharu also began making their way towards the base. En route, Hiruzen wondered, is he leading me to one of the root bases? Why is Danzo there instead of the main base? He didn't need to wonder for long. A minute later, Hiruzen entered the base. As soon as he did, his eyes widened as he noticed the three dead bodies and Donzo standing along with two root ninjas. He asked, What the hell happened here? Before Donzo could answer, Homura and Koharu entered the base as well. Just like Hiruzen, they were stunned as well and asked the same question. Donzo frowned on seeing Hiruzen's expression. He thought, His expression doesn't give away anything. Is he acting or was he really not involved? Seeing that Donzo wasn't answering, Homura asked with more emphasis, Donzo, what happened here? Donzo snorted and said, Why don't you ask Hiruzen? Hiruzen's expression hardened. He asked with a hint of aggression, What do you imply by that, Donzo? Donzo turned around and said, Follow me. He led the group to the body with a hole in his chest and said, All my subordinates in the four auxiliary root bases were killed last night. Everyone was killed with lightning release. Do you still want to feign ignorance, Hiruzen? Hiruzen, Homura, Koharu, and the Ambu guards immediately connected the dots. Every single one was surprised as Danzo was blaming Kakashi. Before anyone could say anything, Danzo asked angrily, Why did Kakashi kill my men, Hiruzen? Hiruzen's face became very serious. He harshly replied, Watch your tone, Danzo. Kakashi isn't even in the village. He left for a rank S mission a week ago. Besides, if I wanted to deal with you, I would have disbanded Root for good. Why would I waste the lives of capable Konoha Shinobi? Danzo replied equally harshly. Is this how you want to play, Hiruzen? Since you don't want to accept responsibility, I'll arrest and question Hatake Kakashi. Immediately, Koharu said sternly, Danzo, control yourself. Arresting Hatake Kakashi is out of the question no matter what the situation is. The evidence you have is only speculative. Besides, even if you had solid evidence to prove that Kakashi was the culprit, we can't arrest him. Homura added, The root was disbanded four years ago. Officially, no root ninja exists. The village can't punish a ninja for killing someone that doesn't exist. So calm down and work together with us. We first need to investigate to understand for sure who was behind this incident. If we fight among ourselves, then whoever is behind this will benefit at our expense. Unlike Danzo, Koharu and Homura had nothing at stake and hence weren't affected by emotions. Both could clearly see the fact that it was not Hiruzen's style. Hiruzen wouldn't have killed Konoha's shinobi. If he was forced to do so by circumstances, there was no way he'd leave behind such a flaw. And, Power Stones guys, let's go to the top 10. If you can, then please support me on Patreon. Link, wpatreon.com slash devilhex no space, can read up to 50 chapters ahead on Patreon. Thank you Jai Wahed Ayub and Etched for supporting me on Patreon.